What's up, blogging heroes, and welcome back to another awesome blogging video. I've just watched a video that had a profound effect on me. It made me realize something really obvious, yet somehow it just kind of went straight past me. And I think a lot of you bloggers out there are likely facing the same thing that I'm facing. As someone who's only been a blogger for around three years, I feel like when I started blogging, I was trained. I was trained like a bit of a dog in the nicest way possible. I was trained by Google. And what was I trained in? Well, I'd go to YouTube. I'd learn about this thing called search engine optimization. And this would teach me that I have to use certain keywords a bit more regularly in my blogs in order to rank. And then I'd learn, oh, we need to have attractive titles that make sure more people come to click or oh, top 10 things you can do to lose weight or these types of things, uh, these types of keywords, these top 10 destinations, top 10 places to go, top 10 activities to do, all these things that I was trained by kind of Google in how to use because, well, that is what did the best successfully, right? Anything success, I'm going to repeat. Oh, that's doing well. I'm going to do that again. This is doing well. I'm going to do that again. That's doing badly. I'm not doing that again. And that's how Google basically trained me through positive reinforcement. Well, unfortunately, Google has flipped the script on us all. And now we're kind of left in the situation where they say, hey, hey, guys, I know I taught you how to do SEO, but I want you to stop doing that. No, 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 no. Stop doing SEO. Instead, what I want you to do is to write about what you enjoy doing and what you're good at. That's it. Don't worry about SEO. Don't worry about keywords. Just write good stuff and share these updates with your audiences. And uh, it's left a lot of us a little bit, a little bit puzzled because you're saying one thing and you've been teaching us another thing for an awfully long amount of time. And so we're like, what the hell do we do? Do we just write blogs because we like it? Do we use keywords and SEO and all that jazz? Who knows? And what this has done is created what I like to call a moral disaster on the world of blogging. Those of you bloggers out there who are just feeling, you're feeling crap, feeling down in the dumps. I'm, I'm there with you. I understand it. I, I really do. It sucks. It, it it bloody sucks when you're led up the garden path only to realize the thing that you love is completely changed and it's actually about something else altogether. It sucks. But the good news is Google is telling us what to do. They aren't being silent. They aren't saying, oh, figure it out for yourself, sunshine. No, they're saying, hey, guys, write about what you're good at and give your audience what they want. Stop trying so hard to get your audience. Instead, just write about what keeps them interested in your content and stop doing all this keyword, top 10 things. Focus on what is good for your audience specifically. Now, where did I, I learn this information? Well, I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of a Twitter fiend, if I do say so myself. And one of the tweets that I saw was Google is slowly killing blogging. And this was a tweet released by Niche Pursuits. And it was a cracking tweet. So fair play, Niche Pursuits. You did a fantastic tweet there. Because Google actually responded. They said, hey, here's some tips for how you can do better with blogging. And they actually shared some unique tips. And it's had a profound effect on me because it's made me realize I've gone the whole wrong direction with blogging. And I need to do a 180. I really do. I need to do a 180. I need to, to stop doing what I'm doing. And I need to turn back on myself and do what I'm good at. I need to stop saying, oh, that's a nice keyword. Oh, oh, that's got some good money in that keyword. And instead, I need to say, hey, hey, Theo, you're good at this, that, and this. So just focus on those three things. Focus on where you are known on the internet for being particularly good at something. Forget about the rest, because guess what? The rest doesn't matter. I've got a combat sports website and 
I like combat sports, but I'm not an expert in combat sports. I don't know anyone who's an expert in combat sports. In fact, I'm just a huge fan of watching basically fighters doing it, MMA and UFC and things like that. So I've got no real footing to write about something I don't know anything about. So by keeping that project to the side, I'm not going to cancel the subscription or anything like that. Just keep it to the side because it still gets me money. It still brings in like $2 a day. That's $2 a day. Just you sit there, you make the money. I'm not going to worry about it because ultimately it's not something I am super passionate about that I want to write about every single day. Gaming? Hey, baby, I'm a gamer. I love gaming. So I'll write about gaming every day. It works well. It just sucks that the uh, RPM, the amount per thousand clicks or views or whatever, is very low until you get to a certain threshold where you can join someone like, like Mediavine and then suddenly you, uh, you're you doing a lot, lot better as a result. So now I want to show you one of my competitors' websites and I want to talk a little bit about why they're doing successfully and how they're doing successfully. I also want to show a video where I just think they did a great job of this video and it really inspired me to make the one that you're watching right now. So this is the video I just watched. It was the Google is slowly killing blogging and it is such a good watch, guys. I'm going to put it in the description below because it really, really helped me gain a better perspective on what it is I'm actually doing. It's supported by hardcore good Google information. And uh, I, I've just got to give a quick shout out to that because it's a great video. Now onto one of my competitors. Now this is Blizzard Watch. I write on my own website, not this website, a, a direct competitor to this website. I write on my own website about World of Warcraft and other games like that. Why? Because I play World of Warcraft. I've played it for 18 years. My name, my persona, which is Erosium, my main YouTube channel, nearly 18,000 subscribers, has a lot of authority in the space. So when I release a post about World of Warcraft or about a game to do with Blizzard, it does well, not just because of the content, it's because they trust me and they know I put out really good content. And I want to show Blizzard Watch because they're doing better than me. And I, I really think that it's important that if you know someone who's doing better than you, look at what they're doing and learn from them. Learn what, what are they doing better than you? And these guys, well, first of all, they have been in the space for around five years longer than me. So there is that to a point. But the other thing is they have a lot more writers than me. Let's just move my camera to the right side so you can get a better look. So this is their website. It's a very basic website. But what if I told you that these guys are making between $5,000 and $10,000 a month just pure and simply from putting out good content? Now, I'm going to show you one of their posts. Let's just click the top post. All right, so this is their post. And as you can see, it is covered in adverts, covered in adverts. There's a real specific reason for that. If you go through the post, it's tiny. It's tiny. It's like, I don't even know how many words that is, but it's not much. Let's have a little look. So in total, the amount of words that they've got is 509 words. So 500 words for a blog post. That's how many they've got. They haven't stressed about keywords. Look, midwinter blight holiday. That's probably their keyword right there, right? And then the rest is just extra stuff they're throwing in there. They've not worried about literally anything else at all. They've just focused on what matters. And that is just the content. Now, I happen to know from reading this website for years that these guys are super passionate about what they write about. They love these games. They write about World of Warcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch all these Blizzard games. And so they are focused on that. Now, I want to show you one thing. You guys are probably thinking, wow, these guys have so many adverts. Well, their adverts only bring in a minor amount of their ad revenue. A large portion of their ad revenue comes from Patreon. OK, now, hopefully this doesn't show you my Patreon. Now, if I show you Patreon, Blizzard Watch, Patreon, Blizzard Watch, you will see that they have 2,500, they have 2,254 members. You can join for free. You can thank them for the support. You can access their podcasts, their extra video content, or you can get an ad free experience for only £4.50 per month. 
This is a support. And then what they do is they have a login right here where you can actually just log into the website and then actually just access all of the content. But as you can see, whenever you look at any of their posts whatsoever, it doesn't matter which one it is, it's not exactly a huge amount of words. They're on average like 500 words each. And all they're doing is sharing information, important information. That's it. They aren't whacking affiliate posts in here, there and everywhere, but they're doing great. They're doing fantastic. And here's another person in the same space as myself. And here is some more posts that they do. Nice, simple and easy post. This one's not even got 400 words. Look at how simple that is. It's got a picture. They're writing about things that people are interested in. What does this do? It keeps people on the page for longer. It keeps people interacting with the page. So how am I going to let this affect me? Well, I've got three sites that I care about going forward as a direct result of this. I've got my membership site, which is doing so well that it would be stupid for me to stop. That is dedicated to creating guides for my members so that they can play the game for free and they can make the most amount of money in their chosen game as possible. And then I've got a website that is about gaming, just generally gaming. And then I've got another website, which is in the health niche. And it's something I care about and I'm passionate about that. So I'll be focusing on those going forward. But what I want to share with you are just a couple little tips that I think are important for you to take away today. And that is stop writing for the search algorithm. Stop writing for keywords. Stop thinking that you just need to make the post sound more clickable. Start writing about what your audience actually care about. What do they genuinely care about? Do they really, really care about the top 10 mice for gaming of 2024? Do they really care about that? Probably don't. Write about what they actually care about. What are your gripes? What do you like? What do you love? What do you hate? Share them on blogging because Google have a way of checking if things are genuine or not. Now, what does this mean for AI? Well, AI is not dead. That's important to bear in mind. The way I'm going to be using AI is to create base articles. I'm going to be rewriting certain sections to add my solid opinion in there before I put my name to it. I don't want to put my name to something that doesn't have a conclusive answer. The problem with AI is it, a lot of the time it doesn't have a conclusive answer. It's always trying to hedge its bet. It's trying to not say the wrong thing. And that's not what we need. We need some, someone who actually does say, hey, I don't like that. That's BS. I like this. This is way better because that's what we need to be seeing. A little bit more controversial, important human opinion. And remember, keeping people on the page for a little bit longer is important. But let's just say you write a 10,000 word article. 10,000 words. Let's just pretend it's 10,000 words, okay? You write a 10,000 word article. Someone comes and reads it and they can't be asked to read it. They're like, oh, balls to this. I'm gone in 30 seconds flat. That's going to tell Google your article is a low value article because you've got so much words and so little read time. Yet you come to one of my competitors like Blizzard Watch with their 500 word article and people read it for like literally a minute or two minutes. They're going to have a way, way better read time than you are. So bear that in mind. It's not always more is better. Sometimes it is be yourself and talk about what you care about is better. All right, guys. And just let me let me finish on this this note. Blocking isn't dead. There's no, it's not dead. I don't believe for a single second it is dead. I think that there is a bit of depression in the blogging niche right now. And it is rightfully caused by Google leading us up the garden path and then saying, hey, guys, it's actually this way. And we were following them like a, and we were just being it was like the blind was leading the blind. And now suddenly we've got a direction we need to walk. And everyone's like, oh, we've got to go this way now. Everyone's just hungry. They want to eat their dinner. They're a bit grouchy. They just want to get back to blogging. So, guys, get back to blogging. It's not all bad. It's great. We get to actually write about what we care about now rather than what we think Google cares about. Isn't that a good thing? I think so. So put a smile on that blooming face 
enjoy yourself blogging. Stop writing uh, depression messages on Twitter about blogging and actually just get back to making some good money doing what it is you love to do. Thanks so much for watching. This is Theo Ramwell and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to check my affiliate links in the description and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.